Hello. Uh, so today we're going to just create a Counter-Strike server using Amazon uh, Linux 2, uh, using EC2 on the cloud. If you are following along, make sure that you, once, once you logged into your account, make sure you pick the region that is closest to you or a region where you want the server to be hosted. I'm just going to be picking US East 1. And then we go ahead and go to EC2. And then we're going to click, click Launch Instances. Click Free Tier Only. Uh, this um, will just highlight the operating systems or machines that will be Free Tier Only. But that doesn't mean um, further on that everything will be Free Tier. But by selecting Amazon Linux 2, AMI, uh, that part will be free. Um, so for here, for example, I've tested this out uh, small. They said that the recommended RAM size is a minimum of two, uh, but you'd probably need more, you'd probably need at least a medium, uh, two CPUs and four gigabytes of RAM. For this demo, we're just gonna use one out of two, uh, one CPU, two RAM, um, just for demonstration purposes. Um, this is your kind of network settings. You can go ahead and leave it as default. Next is storage. Uh, another example of something that might not be free tier. So if you look down here, it says free tier eligible customers can get up to 30 gigabytes of EBS storage, which is an SSD. Um, I've tried this uh, several times to see if 30 gigabytes of storage would be fine for Counter-Strike as anything I've looked up online says that you need like 25 gigabytes of space. Uh, it seems like it's just barely over the 30 gigabytes. I think you use up like 32 gigabytes around that area. So I'm just going to set in 45 just for some extra space. Again, this is just demo purposes um, and just there are a lot of pricing calculators that AWS provides, uh, so you can get a better understanding of how much you would pay a month. But uh, again, this is just demo purposes. We're just gonna put 45 just to get this up and running. You can add tags if you want, but not necessary. Configure a security group. We're gonna use an existing one. Um, and it would, so the ports that you're gonna need to use, actually we'll create a new one create a new security group. We can call this um, CSGO game server. And we'll give it a description of hosting a public CSGO game server. Um, and normally you're going to want to change your SSH. Uh, leave this a TCP. That's the protocol for SSH. It's on port range 22. You can change the source so that it will be your own IP. I highly recommend doing that for additional security. I'm not going to do it on the video, so I don't leak my IP. And I'm just going to leave it open because I'm going to destroy this machine. I'm going to delete the machine anyways after this video is done. But you would want to do that for yourself. Um, you're going to want to add another port, and it's going to be a UDP port for the gaming server. And it's going to be port 27015. Uh, and you're going to want to put anywhere. And that allows any any IP address to um, connect to the gaming server. And we'll just put um, gaming server port here. And we can just copy what it said there. SSH for admin desktop. You can get uh, click review and launch. It's letting us know that it's open to the world um, because of our security settings. Uh, this SSH and the UDP is allowing pretty much anyone to connect to this. Um, so definitely change the SSH protocol so that it's only matching your IP address. It's also letting us know that it's no longer eligible for free tier because we have chosen an instant type that is not free tier, as well as the storage that is um, 
more than 30 gigabytes so it's no longer eligible for free tier again you can probably go online and using a pricing calculator that aws provides to determine how much you would spend a month if you were to host something like this so go ahead and click launch if you have never made uh, an aws ec2 machine before you're going to want to click uh, create a new key pair and then just give it whatever name you want. So you can just say CSGO server. And then you would download the key pair. Uh, I already have my own, um, but you would download the key pair and move it into whatever folder you wanted to put it in. Um, and I'm going to just click choose an existing key pair, AWS Labs. Yes, AWS Labs. I acknowledge that I have the corresponding. Let me just make sure that this is um yes okay i have aws lab uh, key pair so we're just gonna use that launch instance and it's gonna take just a few minutes to get set up um so we just click view instance and it's gonna be in a pending state and it just takes about maybe like two minutes three minutes to get set up and i'll bring the video back once it's ready Okay, it looks like the instance is up and running. Um, it has instance states of running. It still has a status check initializing, but if we click on this, it says instance state is running. So we can just go ahead and click on copy the public IP address. Uh, we'll minimize that. And to SSH into the machine, make sure that you either go into the directory that you saved your key pair in. Mine is here, awslabs.pem. Um, or you can also reference it in your command line. So go ahead and type in sudo ssh dash i, uh, reference your key pair. So if it wasn't in this directory you um, and you're using Linux, you could just type home and then your username and then wherever the pathing is for, so like it could be documents, AWS, and then AWS labs pem. That would be another way to reference it, but I'm in the directory where it's located. So we're just going to type that. Then you're going to type the user of the machine that we're logging in as, which is EC2 user and the IP address we just copied and enter. Uh, and then go ahead and enter your password for your, for your own PC. And it's going to ask you if you want to continue connecting and you're just going to say yes. Okay, so we're in the machine. We're just going to quickly run sudo yum update uh, dash y. And this will take a bit. Not too long, though. Okay, we can go ahead and type in clear the screen to get us a nice clean terminal looking again. Um, so if you are using CentOS or any other operating system, um, this is an Amazon Linux 2 AMI uh, walkthrough, but in case you weren't, you would try to run sudo yum install EPL release as a, a package dependency, but Amazon doesn't have this and it's gonna let us know this package is not available in their repo, uh, but it is available on the Amazon Extra Topic. So and it tells us to run this instead. So we're gonna go ahead and copy this, paste it with the dash Y, and that'll install for us there. Okay, go ahead and clear that. And next we're gonna to need to install, install other package dependencies, so sudo, um, install wget wget um, unzip psmisc glibc dot 
I6 at 6. Go ahead and just, if you don't want to type this out, I will go ahead and leave this in the description. Um, because sometimes human error, we misspell things by accident. And then tmux will allow you to manage your server easier. Um, highly recommend. I'll go ahead and install those. Okay, so that's done. Uh, an optional package that you can also install is htop. It's similar to top, uh, which is pre-packaged installed on, I think, every Linux machine. But htop takes that further uh, and gives us a little bit extra features. And I like to use that instead so we can install htop. That's done. And then a last package that I have been un unable to determine whether or not it's actually necessary is an SDL package. Um, I, I install it anyways, just in case. Um, I haven't quite figured out if it's necessary. I, I do get a lot of uh, reading that says that it, it should be installed. And so I'll go ahead and install that as well. And that's the last package to install. If you want to create another user, so if we type in who am I, we know that we are logged in as EC2 user, but if we want to have another user manage uh, this gaming server, um, so for example, if you print, print working directory, this is where we are, uh, there should be nothing here. But we'll go ahead and create another user just in case you manage multiple servers. And we'll just say, um, so user add dash M and then whatever the username you want. And I'm just gonna create it with the title of admin. Oh, and then you have to add the pseudo for it. And then we can verify that it's been added by running cat Etsy password pipe grep and then admin. Grep is gonna be like a search feature that will look inside the Etsy password file um, and look specifically for admin. And so we can see that it exists. So that's good. Uh, and let's go ahead and create a password for it. So pseudo password admin. And I'm just gonna make the password password just for simplicity. Again, this is a demo and it even lets me know that it's a bad password. Don't do this for your machine. This just demo purposes. Okay. And then we can go ahead um, and we're gonna want to allow the admin or whatever user you just created to be able to run sudo commands. And in order to do that, we're going to have to edit the sudo ers file. So we're gonna go open sudo vim uh, dash etsy sudo ers. Press enter. Um, and this will allow, it says right here, this allows particular users to run various commands as the root user without needing the root password. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and scroll down until we find uh, allow root to run any commands anywhere. Now you could add your user underneath this, or uh, what I like to do instead is add my user to the group wheel, which allows us to run all commands. Alternatively, you could also put them down here, which will allow them to run all commands, but with no password. So go ahead and navigate yourself to the wheel. I'm going to just type, hit the O letter right at the L there, and it will bring us to a new line and allow us to enter uh, text. So we'll go ahead and enter username, uppercase all equals parentheses, all and parentheses tab, all press escape, and then the two dots with WQ, and then an exclamation mark. If we don't put the exclamation mark, it's gonna give us an error that says this is a read only. So go ahead and put the two dots, WQ, exclamation mark, and it'll write and quit that for you. Um, and then we can go ahead and switch to the user that we just created 
going to ask us for the password that we en enabled earlier. And there we are. And even though it says it on the terminal there, we can still run who am I uh, print working directory. And we have the user and pathway there. Um, so let's go ahead and make a directory for steam CMD and make another directory for a CSGO server. And this is where our files will live. Uh, the steam CMD will be the steam client server. Uh, and again, I'm going to just, um, so if we, I'm just going to go ahead and copy. Let's see. Oh, steam CMD tar file. Uh, I'm actually just going to go ahead and leave it in the description for you to get the the link for this, but you're going to go ahead and run wget and then this this uh, link that I have here, again, that'll be in the description. Go ahead and press enter and it will download a tar.gz file for us, as well as we can see that our CSGO server and SteamC CMD uh, folders are there. If we try to look into the contents of those folders, they are empty. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and um, we're going to move the steam.cmd file, the tar file, into the steam cmd folder. So just type mv, the file that we had downloaded and then the, the destination we want. And if we move to, if we actually list the contents of our working directory, we can see it's no longer there. We're going to change our directory to this one and see that it's now here. And we'll go ahead and unzip it by typing tar xvfz and then the file name. And if you just, if there's nothing, if, if the terminal can match, um, the file or whatever you're typing out, you can just go ahead and press tab and it'll auto complete for you. Just go ahead and press enter and it is done. And we can go ahead and remove the, the tar file now, since that is no longer needed and it's gone. Okay. And now we're just going to open up the steam D file or the, the shell command, which will start, uh, the, the server server process. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly exit it out of that after it's done installing. Uh, just to quickly demonstrate, if we type in df space dash h, we can see how much disk space our machine currently has. And right here, we can see that we've currently used two gigabytes worth of space. We still have 43 gigabytes of space left. Uh, so that's something to note. Um, and we'll just go ahead and open the Steam Steam process again. We'll go ahead and log in as anonymous. Okay, and it's gonna give us an error. Um, and that was the package that I was installing earlier, the SDL file that I wasn't sure if it was necessary. Um, I haven't been able to resolve that specific error, but everything works perfectly fine, despite the fact that that's showing. Um, so we are logged in, but we need to let the process know where we want to install our files. So we're going to type in force underscore install underscore dir, and then the path to where we want to go. So home 
admin, which is where our username is, and then the CSGO server folder. And then we're going to type, we're going to now install the files necessary to run the server, app update, 740 validate. And this will take quite some time. Uh, so I will just let this run and, and come back when it's done. And if you do get an error, if you get some um, an error, it usually results in the fact that you don't have enough disk space, which is why I just showed the disk space just now. Uh, to check that, you just run df space minus h, and you should see um, if, there, if there's no disk space left, then you're going to get the error, and it's not going to work because there's nowhere... There's no memory for it to install in. Uh, so if that's the case, if you're using a home PC, then I guess you're out of luck. But if you're using Amazon Linux too, like I'm using, then you're just gonna need to start this process all over again, or you can mount another SSD if you want and try to try again. But yeah, you're just gonna need to add more disk space next time. But I'll go ahead and uh, come back when this is done, because this will take a while. Okay, so the game has fully installed. It says success, app 740 fully installed. So we can go ahead and quit out of there. Uh, clear the screen to get our terminal looking nice. Uh, and then go ahead and change into the CSGO server directory that we created. And we should see all this content in there from uh, the installation that we just ran. We're gonna go ahead and create a new script file uh, called start.sh. It doesn't matter what it's named, just whatever name you go with is fine. And I'm also going to include this in the description because I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste this. Okay, it didn't correctly paste. So, okay, let's try that again. Okay, it's not correctly in pasting. Um, one second. Okay, there it worked. Okay, so we're gonna, the script is just going to automatically change into the directory. Um, you're gonna go to the first line here and past home you're gonna change the user that it had there to the username that you created mine was admin so it's gonna we're gonna go ahead and tell the script to change the directory to home admin uh, CSGO server and make sure that it's running on this port and with the UDP protocol and the second line is specifically uh, well let's go ahead and look at that uh, CSGO has its own set of configurations down here. You can read all about this. There's different types of settings that you can set, different game modes, um, gun game, demolition, anything that you want to do is down here if you want to go ahead and read that. But for this, we're just going to keep it as is. And I'll go ahead and again, paste this in the description so you guys can go ahead and just copy and paste that. Uh, and this game, right over here, there's this long line of characters here. This is your game server token. Um, so I probably will just change it in the description to read like this. Uh, game server token. I'll probably just have it like that. And that's where you're going to enter your own game server token. And to do that, you go to Steam and you can just go on Google and just type Steam Game Server uh, Token and it should bring you to this page. You go ahead and log in. And down here, app ID for the base game. It even gives you the ID for CSGO. So we're gonna ahead and type in 730. And a memo will let us remember what this was for. So we'll go ahead and CSGO, AWS, uh, just lab, I guess. And we'll go ahead and create that and then copy and paste the code or the login token that you are given 
I'm gonna delete this token after this video is done, so there's really no point in trying to if you do copy that one. But anyways, you're gonna go ahead and paste that in the game server token spot, and then press escape, two dots, WQ to write and quit, and it should be good. And you can see the contents of the file by typing cat dot backslash start sh and it's all there good to go um, that should work um, but if we look at the the contents of this directory we can see that it's not this is displayed as a file by this dash here but it only has read write permissions um, for the user that we're logged in as, but not executable. So we're gonna have to change that to executable, right bounding chmod plus x, and then the file name itself, and that will change it to be executable, as we can see here with this x, this x right there. Um, and then we can go ahead and need to make sure we're in the CSGO server directory which we are, and then we can go ahead and create another script. Uh, this this part's optional. If you intend on using Tmux, Tmux is a nice window management for your terminal that allows you to do various things on it. Uh, for example, I have all these different panels um, that allow me to do different things all in the same terminal. I highly recommend it if you want to go ahead and follow along with this, uh, but I would go ahead and also look up tutorials on Tmux itself so you can understand how to use that. But go ahead and create the file csgo.sh. Again, it doesn't have to be the name, whatever name you want to go. And then just type, uh, oh, press I to insert Tmux new backslash uh, dash s csgo server. This name right here can be anything you want. That's just the name of your Tmux session. And then we're going to specify which file we want to run. And it'll be that script that we just created. And then we're going to go ahead and write and quit. <coughs> kind of clear the screen. And again, this, this uh, script that we created is not executable yet. So we need to make that executable. So chmod plus x and then csgo.sh. And now if we run ls minus l, it is now executable by this that x here in the user category there uh, so i'm going to actually open up a new terminal and go to where my pem key is my login key and then we're going to run i'm going to ssh into the machine again reference the pem key EC2 user. We can actually SSH into the user's directly admin, copy the public IP address uh, admin and whatever user that you had created and enter the password for your own machine since you're running sudo. Okay, that did not work. Um, I probably have to change something with that. So we can go, just go ahead and just run the AC2 uh, user. Uh, here we go. Okay, so we're good to go. We'll just do a sudo yum update just to get the machine up to date. Shouldn't take too long because we did that at the start. Okay, it's done. Go to switch to the admin. Enter the password that you had created and print working directory. When my um, contents, we need to go to the CSGO server, which is where we have our files. And <clears throat> we're going to run the CSGO script, which is going to create a Tmux session as well as starting the server. But if we just want to run the server, we can just type in dot backslash start that sh and it should be good to go. Actually, while that is running, I'm going to 
open up a, another window on Tmux and open up Steam so we can test if uh, that server is up and running. I'm not going to open up the game specifically, but um, but we can at least see if the server itself has been verified. Oh, let's do... We were here. Okay. So it looks like it is up and running. Connection to Steam server is successful. This is the public IP address, which is the EC2 machine. Uh, go ahead and copy that. Make sure that your security settings allow for the gaming um, gaming protocol. We have that here. So 27015 UDP port. <clears throat> so that's still good to go. Um, right. Okay. And actually, okay. And the command that we had earlier, htop, allows us to see how this server is running in the background on our machine, how much how much resources is taken up. Um, and you can see that its process ID here is four three three eight. And if you wanted to kill that command, you could just run uh, kill four three three eight, and that would stop the server. As you can see, the server has been booted server quit we just stopped the server from running and the csgo script that we had running should also work properly as you can see at the bottom there's now a tmux session it says csgo serve it didn't complete the um complete the name but this will also start the server and i will go ahead and another th a thing that you can do with htop is you can create a side window on this so now we can actually have the server running on the on the left hand side and also view our resources being utilized by that server uh, okay so the server's up and running we can go ahead and copy this ip address copy that and then go to our steam view servers add a server paste the IP address, make sure you add the two dots and the port number that we had listed and then find games at address and it is working. So that is basically all of it. If you are not able to get the server up and running or if you were at um, over here on this left-handed window, actually, let me make this easier to see. Um, if you were on this left hand window and it was there was an error given and it didn't run properly, make sure that you are you have enough space on your machine. And again, you can check to see how much space you have by running df space minus h. And we are currently using 31 gigabytes and there's still 15 gigabytes left of space left. Um, <clears throat> so that would probably be the first thing I would check. Make sure you have enough space. Thank you for watching. If you have any project suggestions, do let me know. Or if you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them.